What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Table Talk and today we are talking about gateway games. These are some of my favorite types of games because gateway games are simply just easy to learn board games that still have a level of strategy to them. So obviously like game, like party games or social deduction games are really easy to learn but there's not as much strategy to them. But we also have been invited to play games where they're extremely strategic, but also extremely complex and tough to learn the rules. So these are games that have some level of strategy, but are also easy to pick up and learn. So these are great if you're just getting into modern strategy board games, you're looking for a great place to start. If you're like me and you just like easier, simpler to learn games, to so remember those rules. Or if you're trying to introduce someone to modern board games, this is a great place to Start. So this list, I'm going to be focusing on games that are interactive, where it makes it a social experience. So you're either helping the people around the table or trying to compete against them, that they are thematic, they have a fun theme. And finally, that there is still a level of strategy to them, that you can try different options, that the way you play affects your chances of winning. Unlike Candyland and Trouble and all the trash games we played as kids where you realize they're actually just 100% luck. These games, your strategy and the way you play actually determines if you win and there are different ways to go about it. These are my top 10 gateway games. Number 10 brings that Las Vegas gambling betting feeling except it won't cost you any money. This game is called Las Vegas Royale. In this game you are rolling dice and trying to take control of casinos. So every turn you'll roll dice, place down on casinos and try to gain control and get the most money. What I love about this game it has that fun action of rolling the dice, pushing your luck, and just really testing the limits, getting that money, all that feeling you get from gambling or betting on sports games. But thankfully you're not putting on any real money. Because also in this game you can swoop in and steal control of casinos from other players. That adds that interactive element. And if you tie leading a casino, then it actually goes to the next place. So it has that interaction, it has strategy of how you want to use your dice and in what ways. And it also has the fun theme of that Las Vegas theme, taking control of casinos. It leads to a lot of fun moments, risky moments, and moments where you swoop in at the last moment to take your friend's casino. That's my number 10 gateway game, Las Vegas Royale. My number nine game also brings that dice chuck into action, and this is Dice Town. In Dice Town, it has a Wild West theme, and you are trying to take control of a town and once again make the most money. So you'll be rolling dice just like Yahtzee style in a cup, trying to get the fun different amount of combinations like poker hands. And depending on how many jacks, queens, or aces you get, you can go to different areas of town and get different options. Maybe you'll just get straight money. Maybe you'll be able to take control over ties or take over land that also generates you money. So I love it because you're trying to risk just like Yahtzee to get the different combinations, also placing them out and making sure that you are the best to get the different options in town and someone else doesn't swoop in and take your spot. So it has that interactive element, has that fun theme of Wild West and their strategy about where you go and how much money you get, making my number nine Dice Town a fantastic gateway game. Number eight is a company that makes insanely good gateway games and that is Restoration Games. They take crappy old games and make them way better and that is a game called Stop Thief. You can play this game either cooperatively, all working together against the AI or competitively trying to solve the mystery first. Because in this game, you are doing just that, trying to solve a crime. So you all play different investigators, and what's cool is you all have a unique deck, so you have unique moves and actions depending on which investigator you play. You're all trying to catch this thief, and what's awesome is it actually works through an app where you get to hear the noises of crashing through a window or opening a door, walking indoor or at door, and you try to track the culprit on a map and try to get to him first. It's great because it has the movement of trying to race around a board, but also has that mystery element of trying to figure out where the culprit is. You can once again play either competitive, facing off to see who really is the best Sherlock Holmes, or you can go cooperative and just team up together. It has great art and production and components, and all of this makes it a fantastic gateway game, and that's why it's number eight on my list. Stop Thief. My number seven game brings that basketball theme, something I love, debating the go who it is, whether LeBron or MJ, you can settle all that in 
this game basketball. In this game, instead of being the players on the court, you'll actually be managing, and that makes it a way better board game experience because you'll be running a team throughout seasons and trying to end up with the best franchise overall. But every season works different. And so to do good in each season, you'll be auctioning off different players and different abilities. What's cool though, is just like in real life, players get worse and better and have different positions. And all of this leads to a lot of fun as you bet on these fake and sometimes based on real players. And it just leads to just great moments of swooping in, auctioning, grabbing the player somebody else wanted last second, bidding super high and then letting them take it for way too high of a price or getting a cheap steal of a deal. Just like the Spurs always seem to do in the NBA every single draft. It is a lot of fun, simple and easy to learn with a very interesting theme for board games, that basketball theme, different strategy of how you want to manage your team. And it's so simple to teach. One time I was literally at a bar, I had it in my backpack, taught four random people and we had a great time playing it. That makes it a great gateway game and that's why it's my number seven basketball. My number six gateway game is always a weird explanation to people but they're always down to play it because of it. And I always just tell people we're going to gamble on camels racing and that is the game Camel Up. In this game it is a race of camels around a track that can hop over each other, make each other go backwards. It is chaotic. But it's also fun because instead of just controlling one camel and wanting them to win, you can bet on as many camels as you want, both short-term and long-term. You can throw down boosters and setbacks just like Mario Kart. And additionally, you can just roll chonky dice out of a pyramid and get coins that way and play it safe. So it is a great game. You can take long shot bets like me and my buddies did. We all bet on blue despite him being totally in last. And he finished up in first, and now two of those guys put Campbell up on their wedding registries. Because this game just brings people in, right? You're rooting for the underdog. You're going for the overdog. And you can take the huge bet early, which is riskier, but you get more of a payout than if you play it safe and wait for later. You can just roll the pyramid and get those guaranteed coins or take bets, maybe all on one camel or diversify. And it all makes it just super fun, all the different strategies. It's got that fun theme. It's interactive as you're all cheering for different camels. And it's super quick because every turn is just one action. So it'll be your turn. And then all of a sudden they'll be like, wait, it's my turn again? Yes, because the game goes that quick. You can play three to eight players. And you can even make alliances, which I always do. <laughs> I always ally with my wife. She always gets pissed at me. But that's okay because everyone loves camel up, except my friend Tanner. But if you're not Tanner, you'll like this game. My number six gateway game of all time, Camel Up. My number five gateway game of all time brings that childhood dream we all have ever since the movie where we bought a zoo, a building up that zoo. I grew up playing Zoo Tycoon, and in this game, you're taking different polyomino tiles, just like Tetris, and trying to fit them in a puzzle of a zoo. I love that experience of trying to puzzle to get the pieces just right where they uncover and cover certain spots, giving you different actions, all the different tiles do different things, and you're just trying to score the most points at your bear park by the end of the game. Once again, super easy to learn. I taught my mom on Christmas morning, and just like that, she had the game down and actually beat me. I like to think that <laughs> it's how good of a teacher I am and not how bad of a player, but this game... <laughs> I love because it has that puzzly nature, which I'm not always a big puzzle game guy, but even for me, the theme and the interaction of taking the tile just before someone else gets it makes this a great gateway game. Check it out. It's got that strategy, theme, and interaction. Baron Park, my number six gateway game. Number four gateway game of all time is for all you Harry Potter fans. Maybe you're like me and disappointed. <laughs> You found yourself in Slytherin. All your friends disappointment. You found yourself on a college Quidditch team. But in this game, you'll be playing with all the houses, and it is called Hogwarts Battle, a deck-building adventure. What I love about this game is it brings those movie moments to life as you play as the different characters, collect characters into your deck, and fight all of the villains through every single book slash movie. So every book and movie is a new game with different villains to face, locations to go to, and characters and abilities and spells to get. And what I also enjoy is when you start off in the game, it is very, very simple. But by the seventh game, all of a sudden you've added multiple new rules and abilities and cards. And you can throw in two more expansions with four more packs each there. 
and it builds you up to a much more complex and strategic game, but it starts you simple. And it also, I love that it has those movie stills from the movies, which usually I don't love. I like original art, but it brings you back to those movie moments. You're going to be quoting, you're going to say Wingardium Leviosa, and you're going to be taking all of your favorite characters and taking down all the villains as you go through this Hogwarts battle. A Harry Potter adventure I highly recommend for anyone. I also love the interactiveness of the rules in this game. It is a deck building game. So you start out with a simple deck where you can help each other out and help yourself with very limited actions, but then you'll slowly get money to buy better and better cards that by the end of the game, you have an insanely powerful deck. And I just love, love that rule set of building up a better deck. A lot of people have never played a game like that. And once they do, they're going to see how much fun it is build up such a good deck in one single game that is my number four gateway game of all time hogwarts battle a deck building adventure my number three gateway game of all time is for all you star wars fans out there and this is pandemic star wars the clone wars a pandemic system game something like that. it'll show up as star wars the clone wars but it is based on the cooperative classic game pandemic just like pandemic you'll be running around the world to stop a threat, but instead of viruses on the earth like Pandemic, I think this makes it an even more fun theme of you're running around the Star Wars universe as Jedi trying to take down the battle droids and the Sith. It has fun dice rolling as you try to get into the combat. You can also help each other out. You're playing these cards to go to different systems and stop different threats. Every villain you play against can play differently, so it leads to a different game every game you play, and every Jedi has a unique ability. What I love about this game, it is cooperative, just like Hogwarts Battle, and most people have never played a cooperative board game. And that's such a cool experience, instead of competing against each other, to be helping each other out and planning and strategizing as a group how best to win and get that victory, win it for the Jedi and the light side of the Force, forget the sequel trilogies. This one is based on one of the best animated shows ever created, The Clone Wars, and it brings a lot of classic Star Wars characters like Yoda and Obi-Wan to life. Check it out if you want a great cooperative gateway game. My number three gateway game of all time, Star Wars The Clone Wars, a pandemic system game. Number two gateway game of all time is an amazing, amazing system. And that is Seven Wonders Architects. The theme of this game is you're building up a civilization over time. And the way you do that is so, so simple. Every turn, you have an option to take a card in the middle or one of the two cards on your side. And that's it every turn, just take a card. So just like Camel Up, the turns go quick. But by the end of the game, you'll build up this system of this whole civilization, military, science, trade, resources, and you'll be building up this 3D architecture of a wonder of the world by the end of the game. It has great components, great art, super simple gameplay, but there's so many different strategies. I taught this to an old student of mine, and he was really like, I don't want to play, I don't understand the rules. And I was like, dude, you'll pick it up. And so he just picked all the cards that just gave you immediate victory points. And he ended up winning the game. That's his strategy. Just go for the blue victory points cards. Other times you can go for signs and get those bonus tokens. You can just try to get resources and build up as quick as possible. You can go for military and get all the military victory points. And I love how this brings a civilization game and all these different strategies and just makes it so, so simple that anyone can pick it up, including I taught people whose primary language is another language. And one of the ladies has never played a modern board game. And she finished and she goes, I like that. It's a really, really good game. You can play with almost anybody. Great game. My number two gateway game of all time, Seven Wonders Architects. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I never expect anyone, anyone ever to watch these videos. Thank you if you do. And whenever you comment and like, I love responding to the comments. That means the world to me. Check me out on OFPG Voices if you haven't yet. We're trying to spread diverse in the board game hobby that's not always had it, and I love being a part of that team. Additionally, guys, I'm sorry I've been very bad about videos lately. I've moved multiple times, multiple career changes, figured out family stuff, so all that has led to me not having a ton of time for YouTube, and I vowed to never put that above the rest of my life. So I'm hoping to start making more videos again. I got an overhead camera. I want to do some reviews for you guys. I want to make them simple and quick. That's kind of my style and basic enough that anyone could watch it and understand it, even if they're not a board game fan. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Additionally, I want to get on other voices, other people to talk games, so it's not just me. 
And so if you have any other suggestions or games you want me to cover, videos you want me to do, just let me know in the comments below and let's get to my number one gateway game. My number one gateway game of all time is Marvel United. Just like Hogwarts Battle, just like Star Wars The Clone Wars, it is a cooperative game and it is such a cool experience to see someone play a cooperative board game for the first time. I played with a friend a while back and she was literally like, this is not a game. <laughs> Because she thought a game you only ever could compete in. And that like blew her mind that there was a cooperative board game out there. And in this game, what's great is you get to play as the Marvel superheroes everyone watches in the movies. And what's cool is every superhero has a unique deck. So Hulk does a lot of punching. All right, uh, Captain America has leadership, so he's giving out tokens to help other people. And every villain you fight against plays differently. So Ultron's trying to split his clones everywhere. Red Skull's trying to get Hydra power up. And so what's great is every time you play against a different villain, it's a different style. And when you play against a hero, you feel a little different of how good they are at certain abilities. But it ultimately comes down to just four symbols for the heroes. And so it has all this variety, all of these strategies, tons of expansions. Go check them out. But it is dirt simple gameplay. But there is so much strategy and depth in there, interactiveness as the cards you play actually combo and give the next player actions making this my number one gateway game experience of all time, Marvel United, and with all of that being said, I'm gonna catch you guys on the flip side.